Hi, hi, hi. Hey, everybody. I know this is going up after the fact, but happy Easter. He is risen. So it is just a good time right now. And I'm pretty excited to be getting back into the swing of things. March was a weird month um, between my condition, getting sick, kind of switching topics for a little bit. It just, it wasn't the best month for me. Um, I, I didn't keep up with this the way I wanted to, so I apologize to everyone that I didn't keep up with it and I didn't keep you guys as well informed as I could. So we're turning over a new leaf for April. In April, we are gonna try and get as many videos out as possible. I am gonna try to be way more present, way more available to you guys. So with that being said, hi, if you're new here, my name's Cozy. I like to snark on reality TV, specifically shows involving sister wives here on YouTube. I do want to remind you these videos are for entertainment purposes only. These aren't facts. They're just my opinions about public figures sharing their lives on television. So if we're good, we're good. No co-host tonight. No Graham, no Freckles. Uh, Graham is already in bed because he was a little naughty tonight. And uh, yeah, that's as far as I'm going to say about, well, no, I'll share. Mr. Graham decided that while I was in the shower, he was going to take a tinkle somewhere he shouldn't have tinkled. So mommy said, mm -mm, bedtime on time tonight. No, no uh, late bedtime for you. So there's that. And Freckles is currently snuggling the oldest because well, he just needed some lovins and some snuggles for himself. So yeah, no co-host tonight. And we are doing My Five Wives. We're going to get episode three out. I do have a couple other videos that are ready to, to get filmed or to go up or to whatever else. So we're going to jump into My Five Wives tonight and then we're going to just keep pushing forward. So this is episode three of season one of My Five Wives. And it's another school morning. Everybody's house is super hustle and bustle, but Brady's pulling his son Lake aside. Lake is one of Robin's sons. I'm sorry. No, Lake is one of Rhonda's sons. It is hard to keep track when three of his five wives all have our names, let me tell you. Um, and so he wants to talk to him about his upcoming Taekwondo test. And Lake is really excited about this. He is going to potentially earn his purple belt. And I did go and look. And from what I can gather on Google, it looks like this is the fourth color after white. Obviously, white is where everyone starts. Um, so it means he's progressing well. I don't pretend to know a ton about karate or Taekwondo, but I'm really proud of him for the, the effort that he's putting in. But... Brady teases him, I've got six more belts to go before I have to worry about you being able to kick my butt. <laughs> so they giggle and it's really cute. And Brady is is really at a crazy point of the year. The holidays are coming. He knows how important this test is to Lake and he is gonna do his absolute best to make sure he's there, which I think is great. It points out how much he really genuinely cares about something that his child is doing. Rhonda, conversely, is planning to do all of the Thanksgiving shopping for everyone. And she's really hoping Brady will give her a hand by pushing her sister wives to please give her the grocery list. It sounds like that's probably something that is a little bit more easy said than done. Uh, you've got a bunch of people trying to get together everything that they're planning to do for this holiday. And so getting the list from everybody may not be the easiest thing that she's trying to do. And Ron is like, um, do we have room for everybody? Because Brady says that Rosemary's having some friends over. And he's like, listen, once we get grandkids coming along, we're going to have to rent a gymnasium for everyone to fit. A reminder, there are 30 people in their family alone. <laughs> so <laughs> this is already getting outside of the realm of normal. I mean, I come from a pretty large family. My mom's side of the family is Slavic uh, from Poland. My dad's side of the family is... Scottish and Polish. So all around, I just have a lot of Slavic genes in me. So I have a lot of large family in my extended family, which means a lot of food. So I understand being worried, do we even have room for everything? I mean, it is a massive undertaking to cook for 30 people, but Rhonda says it's pretty awesome. Um, she loves it. She thinks it's great. Cooking for just one day a week is already insanity enough. And then you consider all the extraneous with Thanksgiving, um, like I said, my family's really scaled down our holiday dinners as things have gone partially from inflation, partially because of dietary needs, and partially because we've just lost people along the way. Um, and I know that that we had these huge dinners all together when my grandparents were alive, and we're not small. I mentioned I have a big extended family. On one side, I'm the oldest of 15 cousins, and on the other side, the second eldest of eight. So, I mean, bare minimum, there were 20 people at each dinner. You know what I mean? So Rhonda bounces off of Brady saying that since you mentioned the family growing, 
I feel like I'm getting nowhere looking into this adoption. As a reminder, Rhonda's really excited about the idea of adopting, but really concerned that maybe they won't let polygamists do that. It's been about five months since they've decided to look into this, and Rhonda's really been struggling with a lot of things. She knows that pregnancy is not on the table for her, but she would like one more child. And Brady's like, there's got to be an expert or a consultant that you could talk to or we could talk to because I don't know anything. And he explains that there is a definite difference between bigamy and cohabitation. But the laws in Utah are very strict and they are very strict about cohabitation for sure. Bigamy means that you have more than one marriage license. You are attempting to have more than one legal marriage. Utah has a cohabitation clause that says you can't live with more than one person in a relationship you're purporting to be a marriage. So Brady is only legally married to Polly. So he's not a bigamist, but they are cohabitating. And it makes it difficult to consider adoption because when that comes out, who knows where the cards will fall. Noni pops over to talk with Rhonda and Rhonda lets her know she's trying to look into her options. And she knows that there's a lot of people involved in this with a polygamous family. The Williams family is a family where everyone needs to be on the same page. Everyone's thoughts and ideas need to be respected. So Noni asks her, have you found any more information yet? And Rhonda says, no, I haven't. Noni's like, listen, I'm super nervous about everything. She mentions that there's a case going on in Utah to decriminalize polygamy. You know, so no one should ever need to, I don't know, escape to Nevada ever again a thought and she's hopeful that it's going to go their way because she feels like there's nothing wrong with the way they're living as long as everything's consensual and everyone is okay with it the women think the idea of adoption would be interesting and if they ever make it fat past that first step they they'd like to see what this would look like noni says listen we're a large family and every one of us just fit they just fit like the correct pieces of a puzzle and Rhonda asks but how could you not love a child though Noni agrees. What brings better joy than little ones? They're special. And she says that's part of the reason she never wants to say she's truly done having kids. And she does bring up that she was really unsure about the idea of adoption when Rhonda brought it up. For years, the family had just sort of had this understanding that everybody was done having children. And Noni really felt like the door was closed to everyone, that no one was going to be able to do this. If we recall, in the very first episode, she was the one who approached Brady asking, do you think we could consider having another baby? And she admits that when Rhonda proposed adoption, Noni felt like the doors were being thrown wide open again, and it made her really emotional. And she did have that breakdown in that conversation. She loves having her own babies and wanted to know, was this option open to her too? If Rhonda's going to get to adopt, can't I have another one? And she feels like it's in God's hand how all of this plays out in the end. But Rhonda asks, are you considering having another baby right now? And Noni's like, whoa, we both know Brady. A wife being pregnant takes a huge emotional toll on him. And Rhonda's like, he's always relieved when no one's expecting. And that's a phrase I both love and hate because there is part of me that every time I hear it, it's like, yeah, we're expecting a baby, but we're totally chill if it's a velociraptor. Like, I don't know why my brain goes there. It's just a weird phrase. This conversation is definitely uncomfortable given that we know that Noni is desperately seeking the idea of having her own child while Rhonda is looking for this. Rhonda got a solid answer from Brady. Noni didn't. And so she feels, feels she shares that um, it would be one thing if she felt like having a baby was meant to be and Brady would feel it too. And that has to hurt knowing he's really excited about pursuing these options while he's not necessarily as excited about the option that you've put in front of him. In a group confess confessional, a producer really gently asks, is it okay to ask about birth control? And everyone has a very different stance on whether this is okay. Brady's really ready to be open about it, but the women are super duper hesitant. They've never discussed it with the family at large, meaning their families. Um, Rhonda points out but that in the religion they were raised in, it was 100% no for any reason. Um, that it, it's, yeah, they're very silent about it. Everything gets really awkward and tense. And Brady calls out Noni specifically for being afraid to have her family know that she's using birth control. And Rhonda backs her up and was like, whoa, you were raised differently than we were. You were raised mainstream LDS. And for us, this is a, a deep, deep sin. The women inside this group, their life purpose is to have babies and be mothers. And so 
you weren't allowed to prevent that in any way, shape, or form. Rhonda says by changing their minds about birth control specifically, this has really been a big deal. And Brady gets a little bit louder when he's like, this is normal. People across America do this. But the women look super ashamed and he starts to bring his tone down. It's obvious he's not upset with them. He's upset with the idea that there would be anything wrong with them. And he says, I think this is a non-issue. But obviously you guys don't. Noni points out her family doesn't think she is. And so Brady's like, so they think you just abstain? And she's like, yup. <laughs> and everyone, the tension immediately breaks and they all just start to laugh. Except for Polly. Polly's being very quiet. And the poor deer just looks so uncomfortable. Like she would be anywhere else but here if possible. And Robin's like, well, if you're already going to hell, who cares? <laughs> and I, I have to laugh because it's an excellent point. This community that they're in currently already thinks, hey, you... You broke the bonds. You lost your souls. This is this is what it is. You no longer believe. So Robin's right. Is it going to make that much of a difference to anybody inside of the community if they already think their souls are lost? But Rhonda's off to do the Thanksgiving shopping. And it is her turn to do it. She says that every year someone takes it upon themselves to go and do the shopping for everyone. And it's been a few years. It's her turn. I can imagine getting everyone's list can be tough because I know me. I'm actually quite particular. I'm the kind of person that will send my husband pictures of exactly what I want because I need it to be the correct thing. Of course, I need it to be the correct thing for dietary reasons. And the poor dear, I love him with all of my, my heart, mind, and soul. But <sighs> you tell the man a thousand times, hey, I'm not allowed to have soybean products anymore. And he goes, right, and immediately looks at everything with soybeans in it. <laughs> Love him. Love him. Um, anyway, Rhonda's saying that shopping with her toddler makes it more interesting. Yes, it does. And shopping with two five-year-olds when Walmart has moved the candy directly across from frozen vegetables makes my life just peachy keen. Just peachy keen. Whew. She's listing off the things that they can get, like two large turkeys, ham on the side, 20 pounds of potatoes, and internally I'm laughing. Because like I said, I grew up in a Slavic family. And if you don't know what it's like in a Slavic family, there is always more food than any human being on the face of the planet could reasonably consume at any period of time. My mother made more food for Easter breakfast than the eight of us were ever going to eat ever, and then still panicked that it was not going to be enough. I tease my husband all of the time that his Polish mother-in-law is the reason that I don't know how to measure pasta or potatoes. <laughs> because how do you know when enough is enough? 20 pies, though, that might be a bit much. I don't think... Ooh, I don't think that at any Thanksgiving dinner we ever went over eight. If that. I think that was our max. Rhonda says that in order to maintain a budget, each wife gets an allowance every two weeks. But Brady pays for the Thanksgiving dinner, I'm assuming out of more of a family coffer, which is sort of the way that we've seen the Browns go about it in some fashion, where the wives seem to have an amount of money that they get to use to budget. I'm actually very confused about how they do things entirely, but it's it must be in some way similar. Uh, I imagine it would be easier to just maintain a shared pantry of staple goods that anybody can get into and get what they need and then make individual pur purchases on the side. So like your flour, sugar, beans, dry pastas, just all in one shared locale. And then you can get the little things that you need from here to there. That's how I would do it if it were me. But then again, I'm the kind of person who keeps 50 pounds of flour in the house at all times mostly because I have to make my own breads and pastas and things. But, uh, you know, it's easier. So Polly gets a call from the, the her oldest daughter, Carly. Carly is the oldest of all of the children. She was the first to get married, and she moved away to South Dakota with her husband. She's been married for about six months, and Polly says that by that time... Brady was already dating Robin, so things for her were very different. Robin and Brady got married when Polly was about seven months pregnant with Carly. And they're talking about Thanksgiving. Carly's going to her husband's family this year, and Polly's very wistful about Carly missing out on Thanksgiving with the family. Um, and she says that Carly was never raised, none of the children were, to believe that being polygamous will get you into heaven. 
because somewhere down the line, Polly realized that's not what gets you there at all. And they've elected to raise their children in a way that allows them to explore if they believe in polygamy is for them or if it's not. And Carly chose not. Rosemary and Robin are cooking together at Robin's home and discussing school. Robin shares that she has to read poetry out loud for her class and nervously asks Rosemary to read it over. And I'm glad they're supporting each other's choices to go back to school and grow because Rosemary reads the poem that Robin's written about her son and begins crying. And they discuss how hard it is to have their kids grow up. And I feel that. My youngest are going off to kindergarten next year. And it's so hard to think about when it feels like it was just a little while ago that they were just these tiny little bunders in the incubators in the NICU. Just little four pound people. Too early and too small. And the oldest is already in middle school talking about girls and how he's thinking he's grown enough to tell me how it is. And it feels like he was just learning how to talk and now he never stops. And so watching them bond over this poem that Robin wrote about her son being small just touched my heart in a special way. The ladies are really struggling with missing having babies, and Robin tells Rosemary she doesn't dare have another one. In her confessional, she's very candid that another newborn, either biological or adopted, would mean less time with Brady for herself and her children. Back in the kitchen, she says she just keeps telling herself she can hold out for grandbabies. Rosemary shares with her she doesn't feel like it's a closed door for her, but Brady's constantly telling her how overwhelmed he is. In her confessional, she's very honest that she's having a difficult time with being willing to do this adoption thing with Rhonda because Rhonda adopting makes her jealous. Brady's telling her he's too overwhelmed for another baby, but he's saying yes to Rhonda. She back in the kitchen, she tells Robin that she thinks the poem is really cute. I was just snapping my fingers at freckles. I was trying to get her to come say hi to you guys. She walked past me at Polly's home. She delivers the news to Brady on her night that Carly's going to be with her husband's family for Thanksgiving. And Polly for her part says that she feels very special being the first wife. They experienced a lot of firsts together over the years, building their first home together, having the first child be born, uh, to be born and to get married. She feels like that's really special for her. And she knows she holds a special place in Brady's heart. They're both a little sad that their firstborn's missing this holiday, and Brady admits that he's a huge softy, and he's actually been crying about thinking Car of Carly being so far away. In the morning, Polly admits that Brady's spending one of every five nights with her is really difficult, because even though she sees him during, during the day, gets to say goodnight, she really misses him. Noni measures Taylee to see how much she's grown, and there's a doorpost in her home that's just covered with markings and measurements. It is absolutely adorable. She asks Taylee, how do you grow? And Taylee says, eating chicken. <laughs> My kids would agree with that. We ha they have a lot of chicken. Um, a producer asks them to explain how compromise works in their family. And Rhonda's like, well, with six people, six adults in this marriage and sharing homes, it presents a lot of different issues to navigate. Rosemary points out that most of their issues are first word polygamous problems and then says, shut the full cup. Everyone is losing it. I've never heard that phrase before this show to mimic swearing, but it, I'd admit it's pretty funny. Everybody's like, what did you say? And just losing it. And she explains it. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's not what it sounds like. And Noni's like, that's not what it's meant to sound like. So I get it. It's, it's adorable. Um, we get to see Dane trying to help Lake prepare for his karate test, and it's super sweet. Rhonda says it was 24 kids. It's really hard to keep up with what everyone is doing all of the time. She is really hoping that Brady is going to make it there for Lake. But it's Noni's night, and she is 100% ready to discuss this baby topic again. She's definitely struggling to bring it up. And to her credit, she does spit it out pretty well. And it's pretty upfront. She She tells him... She is wanting to consider this. Brady admits that he's thought about it since they've discussed it, but he's worried about his time and his finances. He's not willing to jump in and just say yes. Noni's like, listen, I just want to know that this is something that we can consider. And I think she's pulling back a little bit here because Brady is saying no, essentially. And she really needs to express her full feelings. She needs to share with him that it is obvious the idea of Rhonda adopting is stressing her and the other women out quite a bit. Because they would like to have more children and they're not, no one's willing to say it to Brady yet. 
Brady says he loves his children, but between Rhonda and Noni wanting more kids, and as we know, Rosemary, he's completely overwhelmed. He tells Noni he'd be happy to consider it and to think about it, and Noni says in confessional, balls in Brady's court whether they move forward on this. I disagree. She did not express her feelings clearly enough. She um, said that she had not quite made up her mind about whether she wanted more kids yet. Wasn't quite sure one way or the other. And if she were willing to be up front and say, I want to have another baby. And this whole adoption, adoption idea has me feeling very unheard. I would really like you to consider what this would mean for us and explore this more with me. I think Brady would actually understand the gravity of all of these choices just a little bit more because the adoption choice and the choice to have another baby with Noni is going to affect the family in a lot of different ways. And I don't think anybody's being super upfront about what they're feeling about everything. I know there are reasons that those kinds of conversations don't happen on camera, 100%. But the conversations that we do see dance a little bit too much around the subject and make me concerned that nobody's expressing their real feelings. Rhonda shares she loves being a mother and she feels like her children are lucky to have her, lucky to have Brady, lucky to have the family that they're in. And she is getting ready to call an adoption agency and ask some questions. She's sharing her worries with Noni and Noni points out this situation is so unique. Rhonda's clearly flustered and very nervous as she's snuggling her littlest up close to her. Nick is just cuddled in her arms and she's trying to make the call. Noni knows that this is super important to Rhonda but she, because she'd never want to be told she can't have more kids. Rhonda makes the call and she starts off explaining, I'm a single mother of four, but the father's very active in raising the children with her. And she's trying to say all this and then finally just breaks. And she says, you know what? It's a polygamy situation. She defends that even though Brady is only there so many nights a week, that he's a good, he's an active father. The woman on the phone admits she doesn't know really much about polygamy and adoption and how those two mix together. And there's probably just not a lot of times this is going to come into play for somebody like that. Rhonda is already feeling this sinking feeling that this is just the end of the road for the process. In her confessional, she says this is just the tip of the iceberg, though, and they're going to have to keep moving forward. So she's not giving up yet. It is time for Lake's test, and Rhonda's not sure if Brady's going to make it, but make it he does. Lake shares that he wouldn't be surprised if Brady didn't make it. And he feels way more confident with his dad there. So when Brady walks in, you can see the kind of change in him. There is some tension as Lake attempts to break the board and breaks it on his third kick, earning himself his purple belt with no conditions. Brady and Rhonda are both super proud of him. Back at home, Brady gets a text that the Browns have won their lawsuit. Now, we know about this lawsuit from Sister Wives, sort of. They really never did a great job of discussing on that show at all. Uh, we heard a couple of things, but it was kind of swept under the rug a little bit. But to sum up, the Browns sued the state of Utah over polygamy laws. They won the original suit and then lost it on appeal um, because there was no danger of them being incarcerated and they fled to Vegas during the investigation. The suit was said to decriminalize polygamy, but I'm not sure exactly how it worked. And it only lasted for, I think, a year and a half. Um, so... And nowadays, polygamy is treated more like a parking ticket. So Brady does a much better job of explaining it than Cody actually ever has. They call all the wives to Rhonda's house and share that the court has found the polygamy law unconstitutional. Brady reads out the court's decision, which ruled the free exercise clause of the First Amendment was violated by the cohabitation law, which is interesting because I actually have a video coming up shortly about sister wives where I had mentioned that I thought that if Cody had used the argument in the second season to justify polygamy, uh, I might have had better arguments for him. He just didn't. So I guess someone figured it out along the way. Um, it is interesting that other shows have made a much bigger deal about this court finding than Sister Wives ever actually did. Part of me wonders if it was because it went into appeals and was overturned and maybe it was a source of a sore spot or a source of embarrassment. I'm not sure, but they really did didn't discuss it on Sister Wives very much. Weirdly enough, no one seems to react at first, but Noni says that she lives this life of her own choice, and now she doesn't have to be afraid anymore. Rhonda was the only one at first to show us a lot of emotion, because she feels like this could open the doors for adoption. But then Rosemary is crying, and she's just relieved that she's not going to lose her kids or her family. She never expected this could be overturned in her lifetime. 
Holly's a little more interesting because she says she can receive the relief on their faces and there won't be so much fear and hiding. I don't know if it's because she's the legal wife and so she feels like maybe she's more stable or maybe she's just looking around to her sister wives and noticing that there is just an uplifting in the air. But Brady and his wives lift up a prayer and thanks for the verdict. And Brady says that these are some of the prettiest ex-cons ever. So we get to Thanksgiving and Rosemary's hosting Thanksgiving dinner at her house. Traditionally, they've always had it at Polly's, but this year they've made a change. Everyone's working together to make something different and setting tables. Robin loves Thanksgiving as a time to come together and just spend time together. And I feel Noni in my soul as she's calling Rosemary looking for ginger. I have started so many recipes only to realize I don't have what I need. And I don't have sister wives, so I just go raid my mom's pantry usually. They ask some of the daughters what they're thankful for, and the general answer overall is family. Brady at dinner is trying to get everyone's attention because they always share, every person shares something they're thankful for before the prayer. And the overall answer is family from just about everybody, mom, dad, family, except for Trey, who is thankful for oranges. And that kid has a favorite fruit. And all I can say is I'd be thankful for berries personally, but Trey, you go kid. You step out of that box of family and you tell us about your favorite fruit. Oranges need the respect that they, that they need that respect. They deserve it. Brady has Noni give the Thanksgiving prayer this year, and Rhonda says that when each kid is sharing what they're thankful for, in her head, she's sharing what she's thankful for about each child, which I think is actually a really sweet way to go about. You've got that many children, so be able to think of something wonderful about each of them, I think is actually really important and beautiful. In their confessionals, the wives say that they're just grateful for each other and for Brady. So... That's where they leave that one. Heading into the next series of holidays. I do believe actually the next one is either right before Christmas or is Christmas. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think that's where we're headed next. This is always a fun show. It's significantly less dramatic than Sister Wives, but at the same time, you do get a little bit of interpersonal drama. What with the whole Noni, Rhonda, Rosemary, baby adoption situation, because we know that this is definitely very stressful for them. And then sometimes you get petty drama like the last episode with Polly and Noni and the bill that got paid. The one thing I will say I noticed is that Robin in this series tends to stay as far away from the drama as she can possibly get. And you go girl. She is one of the quietest people on the show. She doesn't tend to jump out and take center stage. But the moments where she does take take um, uh, a time to share what she's thinking or how she feels I actually feel very genuine and from the heart. So I really enjoy that. Polly definitely also stays in the shadows and tries to stay out of drama overall, um, which I think is good for her too. But I really enjoy the way that this family kind of operates and is willing to show us the good and the bad parts. We've seen some fights and we've seen some really sweet moments between the family members. So I really am enjoying it. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait to get through the whole thing and see where we think like I said it's only two seasons so it's relatively short but I really want to see where we think that this family kind of had some wins and losses versus some of the other families we've seen but I'm thrilled for that I do have uh Seeking Sister Wife episode four to do and pretty soon episode five I know I'm behind by a week I got really sick from my meds again sorry guys it's just gonna keep happening as we kind of make this transition to new medications but there's nothing else I can do unless I want my IIH to just sort of take over my life. And I'm not looking forward to that right now. So um, I'm going to get that done. I'm going to get those two done. I have a Sister Wives video coming out and, of course, more of Seeking Sister Wife. So I'm really excited to share that guys with you guys. And I can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye.